Darren, my friend, welcome to the show, buddy. It's so good to have you. It's great to be here. Great to see you. You know, it's funny. I've been thinking for about a year of having you on, and I don't know why it kept slipping my mind. I kept, I kept saying, why haven't I told Jillian to call Darren yet? And then one day when it entered my mind, I texted her right away. Get a hold of Darren German. I want to have him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's all good. I, I figured that uh, at some point you were going to run out of uh, smart people to talk to, and then you'd have me on. So, <laughs> Well, no, you're actually about a year behind when I first started thinking about you. It's so funny, right? But yeah. anyway, so listen, it's great to have you here, buddy. So let's just set this up a little bit. You know, there's there's a few things I want to talk about with you. You've been in real estate for how long? Just tell everybody how long you've been in real estate. Since 2007. So uh, it's coming up on 17 years now, I think, if my math's right. Amazing. You don't look old enough to have been in the business that long. Well, I started when I was 22. I don't know who gave me that advice to do that, but um, it uh, it happened nonetheless. So it's been been a, been a while. It's uh, you know people are usually surprised when they hear that how long I've been doing it. So yeah. nothing happened overnight, as you know. But um, it's been an incredible business, and very thankful to uh, have been a part of it. Yeah, for sure. Well, you've done so well, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, tell everybody the market that you're in, and just describe it a little bit for us, so people have an understanding of of the area that you work in. Yeah, so I do Surrey, British Columbia and kind of surrounding municipalities. I actually live in a community called White Rock, which is about as far uh, to the um, southwest as you can get. So it's a border town. We're actually like touching the border with the United States and there's ocean on one side. So um, yeah, kind of service that area and all the surrounding uh, municipalities. And um, it's very similar to uh, maybe like Toronto, but not as many people, obviously, but like there's, there's little cities and towns all over the place. So you can drive for an hour and still, you know, be in traffic and, um, you know, have places to serve all over the, all over the place, which, as the crow flies is pretty close, but if you're taking a car, sometimes it doesn't work out so well to get there quickly. Yeah, I know. Well, that whole greater Vancouver area is it's really hard to get around, especially when you get closer to the city with all the bridges and everything else. But I've been to White Rock, um, real beautiful area. It's it's amazing. I uh, I actually I remember you when I first bought my house here. I I think I sent you and your wife and my my coach a, a picture of it, and uh, I was so proud of it. And just yeah, I absolutely love it. It's. It's uh, I feel it's one of those neighborhoods where I'll go for a walk with my wife often and we'll just talk about how thankful we are to live here and how grateful we are to, to be able to call this place home. And, it, you know, you, you smile when you're driving home at night sort of thing and just absolutely love it. So very happy about it. Yeah. So I, and I would say to the listeners, if you've never been to White Rock, you got to, you know, if you get out around Vancouver somewhere, you, you got to make that drive. How far is it from downtown Vancouver? No traffic. Uh, we're probably about 45 minutes, but uh, in, in Vancouver, that's not really a thing. So I would say more so, you know, maybe, uh, you know, 60 to 70 minutes type thing. Yeah. But if you ever get a chance, listeners, you got to go and see White Rock, this beautiful street with all these nice shops on it, right? You get the water and it's just, uh, it's really, it's really gorgeous. Now, uh, you've been married for how long, my friend? Oh, geez, you should have given me that in uh, pre question prep here. Um, no, since uh, since 2015, I know the year anyway, I got to do the math on my fingers if I start counting. But uh, yeah, since 20, 2015, <laughs> it's been, uh, been awesome. We, uh, we, we met in 2010. And uh, I was gonna say I've been together ever since but I think that was uh, probably implied. Yeah. And how many kids do you have? I've got two kids. I've got a three-year-old uh, girl and I've got a six-year-old boy and they are just unbelievable. They're so much fun. That's great. Well, that's why I asked you that question because I know you're a very, very busy man and you, I would say, are very disciplined in the way that you do business. And I have a lot of respect for you because, you know, time off is important to you. Um, you know, even at night, you only generally work to certain hours and you know, your voicemail, not that we all use voicemail much anymore anyway, but, you know, I'll call you back tomorrow, uh, which I think is so respectful of your family. But the other thing that you've done well is you've really served the industry. And again, I, you know, I'm just so thankful for people like you that serve our industry because there's many of us, obviously me included, that other than what I do for a living, um, I really don't do much outside of that for the real estate industry. So why don't you tell everybody about you know, the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board, what happened there? And now I know you're on the board of directors with Korea. Yeah. So it, like a lot of people, it all started off just kind of volunteering for committees and whatnot. And 
uh, I've always had this, this thing about me. And I, I think there is lots of people that have this as well, but I just, I, I, I always want to be a part of the solution. And, you know, when, when people are, um, you know, com maybe complaining about something that's going on in their lives or our, our industry. I mean, we're in real estate, so there's lots of, there's lots of reasons people like to complain as you know, and, uh, I would just much rather be part of the solution and trying to make it better for everybody. And it's, it's, it's been a really interesting ride in doing so. So I, I, I joined, um, the Fraser Valley real estate board after being on committees for a few years and uh, became a director and, and kind of went up through the ranks and, I more jokingly say I went up through the ranks because I've got a problem saying no to people. So um, if, if any of the listeners need uh, need free solicitation, they can always call me, I guess, because I won't say no. <laughs> but um, anyways, just kind of went up through the ranks and and had I've had some incredible leadership in in my life um, from from great leaders and um, kind of got tapped on the shoulder and said, hey, you know this this could be something that might might be in your future. So I've been very blessed to. Um, have a have a path towards that and became the chair of the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board in 2019, uh, chair or president, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so that kind of tenure ended in uh, right before COVID, um, which might have been uh, very, very lucky in that regard, um, because it was a pretty tumultuous year for the people that were still there, obviously. Um, and, you know, kudos to anybody in the real estate industry that, um, you know, was in leadership at that time, because it was really difficult. Um, but, uh, I had started doing some volunteering at the provincial and national level at, at those times as well. So we have the British Columbia real estate association. And then of course, uh, the Canadian real estate association. So, um, through, you know, some of my great mentors again, as well, just got tapped on the shoulder and said, you know, have you ever thought about uh, doing something with the Canadian real estate association? So I, I hadn't have really, but the more I thought about it, the more I got excited about it and, um, at the time, it was roughly about 160,000 realtors from across Canada that uh, the, the organization represents. And um, they do an incredible job. And they're always working really, really hard to get better. And uh, that's something I definitely want to be a part of. So I put my name forward. And I'm just kind of wrapping up um, the remainder of my two year term at this point. That's great. Good for you. Are you going to continue? I'd like to. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to, I've got to get voted in. So uh, yeah, I'll start posting flyers to trees in the neighborhood pretty soon, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, we've got the annual general meeting coming up um, and uh, yeah, look, looking forward to going back. It's, 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 it's definitely um, it's been a real pleasure to serve uh, the realtors across Canada and even in the Fraser Valley when I was doing it. And, you know, everybody always asks me what I get out of it. And um, it, I just, I just want to do a really good job for people. Honestly, that's it. And I just, I want to leave the industry better um, than it is today. Um, you know, if I can leave it and put it in a better spot, I've done my job and that's all I really care about. So I, uh, I love it. Well, it's a pretty big commitment because it takes up what you're doing is you're giving up your time away from your business and away from your family when you do that. So, you know, I know that, you know, it's not like you're being compensated as such, but the, the the challenge is is you're maybe not making as much from your business as you could because you're spending you know time looking after all of the affairs there. Plus, you know, you're you're traveling. You got to go to a lot of events. Um, so, tell me, what have you learned? Because I know I look at our industry and and I like what you said. You know, let's not be part of the problem. Let's be part of the solution. And I remember actually Dan Sullivan said this one time. Uh, the company called the strategic coach and people were asking him in this, we're sitting around having lunch. Anyway, they're asking him this question, but so, you know, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And he said, I don't think anything about it because if I can't solve the problem, I'm not going to do it. There's nothing I can do. Right. So I just let it go. He goes, I don't want that stuff in my head. Right. It'd be like, well, just a minute, you know, rates are changing. Yeah. And everybody gets all frustrated, but we can't do anything about that. So why are we allowing that stuff, right? And Dan said this, he goes, the only time that you should let something bother you is if you're willing to do something about it. And if you're not willing to do something about it, then let it go. Because there's absolutely nothing you do. Why would you allow that? The mental space. And I thought, wow, what an involved way to think. You know what I mean? And and I think there's a lot of people in an industry that do bitch and complain all the time, Darren. I hear it. You hear it. We all know that. Um, and, you know, a change is made. They're all upset of the changes made and that sort of thing. But maybe they need to choose to get involved, right? And instead of just, you know, on the outside looking in, bitching and complaining, maybe they need to make a decision, you know, hey, 
maybe I should go serve for a little while and find out what's really going on, you know, inside those rooms. And then maybe I can affect change. So what did you learn from that experience? If you look at the whole experience you've had serving, what have you learned from that? Oh my gosh. I've learned so many things. I've learned that uh, realtors are as a whole, unbelievable people. Um, you know, the amount of volunteering and goodwill towards the community and just everything that they do, let alone what they bring to a transaction um, is just like heartwarming. Um, you know, that, that, that's been something really great. Um, I've learned that real estate is very popular. Um, you know, we've always got outside influences kind of pointing their spears at us and whatnot. And it's a good thing because it means that we need to be on our toes and we need to be prepared to serve the consumer better every single day. And we wouldn't be necessarily as an industry where we are without that. Um, and the last thing, uh, more of a selfish thing that it's provided me with is I've had to get very, very good with my time. Uh, as you were saying, there is a lot of traveling. It is a big time commitment. Even prior to jumping on this call, I was on a call for an hour with some of the um, stuff that I'm dealing with right now. And I have to be very selective about where I spend my time. Um, I need to make sure that when I am spending my time somewhere that it's impactful and it's going to deliver to the people that I serve what they need from me and, and my team. So I've gotten very, very good at being strategic with that. And uh, my schedule is better than it's absolutely ever been. I've always been very good at managing my schedule, but I'm better than I've ever been. And that's also resulted in a better family life as well. Because with young kids, I never quite understood it until I had kids. And I really understand it now. But you know, the ability to be home and be present and be able to spend quality time with my family is so important. It's the most important thing to me. And um, I, it helped me prepare for that to be able to still run a successful business, but also to uh, have a successful marriage and a successful family life as well. You know, I love that thought. I think, you know, sometimes we all forget that, you know, the most important thing in our life is our family. And so, you know, sometimes you got to really look at what does your week look like? And are you giving them the time? If they're your number one priority, does your schedule reflect them being your number one priority? Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to get helpful to the listeners now. So you've, like, so you started real estate, you're sort of by yourself, you grew a team. Uh, a little while, you sort of change your team dynamics a little bit, uh, you know, and, and went from sort of, you know, a commission buyer's agent. And I, I just want you to take everybody through your growth, because one of the challenges that I see in the industry is that there's two things that I think happen that hold a lot of people back. Number one is agents will not make the investment in people to help them. So they do everything themselves. And unfortunately, when you do everything yourselves, when you don't have an assistant, you are an assistant, right? So they, you know, they, and, and then there's some people just want to do that, but there's some people so frustrated by it, it drives them crazy. The second thing I see right now is that a lot of teams are building, and this has been going on for quite a while, but the problem is they're not terribly profitable. And I see a lot of P&Ls, right? And they're not profitable because they're giving away the lion's share of the commission. And then they got all the other expenses, administrative, marketing, you know, all those other expenses. And by the time they're done, you know, they're keeping 10 points, right? And you're going, well, you're doing all this work for, you know, 10 points. It seems like a lot of responsibility, you know, for 10 points. You know, I've always said that if you own a company, you should be the highest paid person because you're the one that owns the company and you got the most responsibility, right? So share your thoughts on your business models and why you've changed them, how they've evolved for you, and what would be your recommendation to anybody thinking of growing a little bit? Yeah, you know, if I if I can share a story with you real quick, it was it was actually an agent within the, the RRI organization. They they called me it was a couple months back, and I, I won't say their name, but um, they they had had a, a buyer's agent, and they were they were having trouble keeping them motivated. So I started asking some questions and, um, I, you know, how much business do they bring in and, you know, what is, what's their compensation, um, you know, typically like all that sort of stuff. And they had told me that the compensation for this particular agent, they were in the Toronto market. So, you know, commissions tend to be a little bit higher over there, but they, they, uh, they were making well over $200,000 a year selling not a ton of homes and they were bringing in maybe two or three deals on their own per year. And I was just flabbergasted 
to think that you're having trouble motivating somebody who's making that sort of income to care about their job. It just absolutely blew my mind. And it just cemented uh, the way that I've created my business and my business model now. So, uh, I mean, like everybody, I started off as an individual. Actually, that, sorry, that's not true. I started off working with um, a great friend of yours and mine, Chris Whitehead, right. um, who I have the utmost respect for. Um, you yeah. know, he taught me taught me a lot. He's one and, of the greats, uh, isn't he? He is. He is. He's just such an amazing person. And um, anyways, he, he taught me a lot. And I was, I was fortunate to have maintained a friendship with him up to this day. But uh, worked with him a little bit when I first got started. And uh, he was running the team model how he was at, uh, at the time. His team model also evolved over time. But that kind of showed me that that's not necessarily how I wanted to run my business. At that time, I was kind of thinking, you know, I'm going to be an individual agent and this is what I want to do. So got on, got into my own. And um, you're right. Like if you don't have an administrator, you're, you are the administrator and um, not all tasks are created equal. So very quickly did get an administrator and that made a huge difference, obviously in the business, you know, there's so many things that uh, we can spend time on, but you should be really spending money on your biggest dollar producing activities. So, so that, that's a little bit of a game changer. And then prior to COVID, I got into the, the kind of the team model and was doing what so many people do in the industry where they've got like maybe a 50, 50 split with a buyer's agent, that sort of thing. And I had some really great talks with some of um, some of the members of RRI at the time. And they were miserable with their models. Uh, they didn't, they, they, they just detested them. And they, similar to the story I told, they were having problems getting some of their agents motivated to get up and go do things on, you know, for the good of the team, if it didn't line their pockets, it didn't make them money. And I go, wow, that's not a team at all, right? Like that's, that's just somebody who's got a business within a business and they're not even necessarily valuing, um, you know, the structure that's been created and everything that's led up to the point to allow them to do a transaction. So that was it for me. I said, you know, I, I, I don't want to run my business like this. I want people that are committed to the team that are there as a whole. Um, and we're all one unit kind of moving forward together. So, um, and I, I don't think I created this. I think there were some other people running a model like this, but it certainly got more popular over the last couple of years where, I really differentiated my, my business between sales and service. I'm in sales, right? My, my job is to go and attract business and, you know, it's still service the business and all that, but the, the profits are in sales because without the phone ringing, there is nothing, right? Like you can be the best plumber in the world, but if you've got nothing to fix and nowhere to show up to, it really doesn't matter. So I separated my business between sales and service. And what I did is I brought on uh, full-time employees. So uh, an administrator, obviously, and um, what I call my business partner. And shout out to my team. They are both absolutely amazing. I'm so fortunate to have them. And you know, the, the, they've got the work ethic and the passion and the drive to be there, um, which is really lucky. Not always easy to find. But so anyways, we, we brought these uh, both of them on full-time. And my business partner, what we decided on was, you know, the ups and downs of real estate can be really difficult, especially on a newer agent. So we said, well, why don't we put you on a fixed salary? Um, so you've always got some money coming in, right? Regardless of whether you're doing sales or not, that sort of thing. Because I want to make sure that you don't go through the same growing pains that I did with cash flow and all that sort of stuff. Um, I also want to make sure that you don't have the same life that I had when I was coming up because my personal life was was not that awesome. You know, when I was operating on my own, I was so busy all the time. And even though I've always been good with managing my time, it was still a challenge. So I said, you know, I want you to have regular days off. I want you to have a consistent income. I want you to have health benefits. I want you to have, you know, a cell phone that's paid for. I want to eliminate all your bills as much as I can. So not only did I give them a salary, but I also give them a gross of our, or a portion of our total gross sales. Right. So whether it's myself putting the deal together, them putting the deal together or other team members down the road, putting the deal together, they will always get a portion of that gross. So now we're all working together as a team towards a common goal and we're there for everybody. So it doesn't matter whether it's a seller or a buyer, we're all fully invested in these clients to make their experience the absolute best that it can be. And it's just been a brilliant model for us and also a brilliant model for our clients. I love that model because what you've done is you think about it, if you, if you have a buyer's agent or even a listing agent on your team or just an agent on your team, they do a lot of service work. 
right? They're not just in a sales position. They're doing a lot of service work well. So now what you've done is hired somebody that can manage all of the service work for you, which a lot of salespeople will do. So you can just sort of client face all of the time. And none of that, they are getting a piece of the action, but they also have some security with the salary, which I, I think that's one of the, the greatest fears for most agents is, you know, oh my. but then the other fear is this. <clears throat> I know, obviously, you know, we've coached thousands and thousands of people. And so I talked to a lot of these people and a lot of agents are afraid to hire an assistant or like you, which you call an administrator, right? And then your partner, who technically is in the service side of things, and you're on the sales side of things, right? And pay them the salary because they're always worried they won't be able to pay them. How do you deal with that? So always worried that they won't be able to pay they them. They won't be able yeah. to pay them. People go, well, you know, if I got, if I'm paying somebody two, $3,000 a month, what if I, you know, don't have the two, $3,000 a month? So what they end up doing is they start giving, and I know a lot of people that do this with assistants too. They just give them a piece of each deal because they're afraid to put them on a salary. But the problem when you're doing that is sort of like borrowing money because you're paying more than you would if you did salary. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if I pay for something cash, it costs me this much. If I pay for something and I got to pay interest on it, it costs me this much. And a lot of agents are doing the same thing, whether it's with an administrator or a service person, they're afraid to put them on a salary, worrying about cash flow. How do you deal with that? Yeah, well, it's such a good question. And it comes down to the risk and reward. So if, if you were going to give X amount of transactions, so let's say a more traditional buyer's agent model, um, you know, you, you could figure out what that would be. And there's got to be a win for both parties. So under like the salary model, as an example, if I estimate that I'm going to do, let's say 30 buyer transactions, and they're going to take on 20 of them, well, I can, based on my average commission, get an idea of what that's going to cost me. But what I've done with this model is I've eliminated a lot of the downsides about being a self-employed realtor, always running the hamster wheel and trying to find new business. And I've tried to increase the upside. However, right. you know, there's a cost to, the, to being able to enjoy that. So you might not get, you know, the full benefit of that 50-50 model, but you're going to get a lot of other things that are incredible parts of being able to participate in this industry and it's just going to be slightly less than what you might get on, on that other end. So now I'm able to capture more of the profit, but I'm also able to have them participate in real estate, have a way better quality of life and still make great money. So it, it's got to be a win for everybody, but you've got to, you've got to look at it um, as a business owner. It's a business decision, right? So what, what is your time worth? What could you be doing with your time? And it, what's really fun, and a lot of team leaders will say this, is now it's like, well, how can I help them be more successful? A lot of my day focuses around my business partner now and saying, you know, what can I do to help you make more money? So one thing I'll add that I didn't add is part of our business model is for any of the deals that they do bring in, they will get a substantially higher percentage of that because I still want them to be encouraged to participate in the open houses and, you know, really try and shake the tree and see what they can find out of it. So that's such a fun way for them to say, well, I can really increase my income by increasing my skill set, but I'm also covered. And I know that if I just provide really great service to the people that our company serves, then everything's going to go the way as planned. And we're going to have, you know, continuously growing business and, and be encouraged to, to do so. Yeah. You said it's risk reward, right? Yeah. So if you're willing to take a little bit of risk, your reward should be higher because you're keeping a higher percentage of the commission, where if you do it the other way, you're putting them at risk. You got to pay them. You got to incentivize them more, right, to get them to take that type of pay, and which means you're getting less. Yeah, and we're coming out of a great example market of where, you know, in 2021, parts of 2022, it was, it, let's be frank. I mean, it was, it was easy to sell real estate. If you could, you know, fog a mirror, you could sell a house, right? So, um, it, you know, at that time, maybe that business model wasn't the best for, for this, uh, for this particular person, right? However, move forward to 2023 market as an example, and going into 2024, where it's a lot more difficult to sell a house, right? So, when when we're all committed to being part of the team and continue to are uh, committed rather to growing it together, that's that kind of risk reward that we're both willing to accept to grow together to make it better. And as the growth of the company grows, so does the income of of my business partner. So it's it, it's really uh, just a great system that we've developed that uh, that works well for everybody. I really like it. And the other thing too is 
you know, you said something earlier that made a lot of sense. I actually never thought about this before, but it was uh, it was a very good insight. You said, so think about you got a bunch of people on your team and all they're doing is going out and trying to sell houses to feed themselves. Well, is that really a team? It's not. They don't really care about anything else, right? They're just going, oh, I'm just wake up every day and you know, I'm going to go fishing and see if I can catch a fish for me. And then I'll take, you know, the fish and yeah, you know, the team gets the percent and I get a percent and then they wake up and say, where's my next lead, Darren? You know, come on, feed me some leads. You know what I mean? But they, they, they're not involved in anything else, nor do they care about anything else. No, I mean, if, if it's not lining their pockets, they're not interested in showing up. So, you know, we want to build this together. Like we, we rebranded and uh, we went with the, the German group only because, I mean, it was obviously coming off my own original name and whatnot, but we wanted to go to the group because I want to build this to something bigger than me. I don't always want to be, I don't necessarily want to be the face of it. Um, I don't care about, all I care about is the experience and what we, how we leave people feeling after we do a transaction with them. That's the most important thing to me. So, um, and obviously we want them to feel good. Like they got good value for their money. They hired the absolute best realtors in the community to service their needs. That's what I care about. And so I'm only going to bring people onto my team who have that belief and that mindset that we're going to grow as a team. And it's all about the consumer. And outside of that, I mean, it'll all put itself together if everybody's doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the main reasons I want to talk with the podcast, because I, I, I like the way you're thinking. I like the way you're growing. You know, there's a number of people within our coaching program like you that are doing this with a lot of success, like a lot of success, which is, which is really cool. So let's I want to talk a little about, you know, systems, how you've automated a lot of things. So maybe take us through this so you can explain it any way you want, but you, you're, you're pretty up in technology. I, I would, I would say that. Um, probably too much. I should probably spend more time trying to sell real estate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, since you're so up on it, we're going to take advantage of it right now. So, uh, good. so take me through, if you would, and there, there's really two ways you could handle this question. One, you could tell me about some of the technologies you're using for the systems in your business. Or number two, you could take us through sort of, you know, marketing, you know, right through to the deals done. And, you know, now we communicate afterwards and, and what you use through the process. So you're not, you know, your, your administrative assistant, your partner, they're not, they're not manually doing all this work. And you can just push a button and get it done. Because I know there's a lot of people actually just got off an impact call with their members. And uh, Derek uh, Timmons did a wonderful presentation day in a lead follow-up. Um, I don't know if you're on or not because you're on another call, but you know, you should listen to it. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. He spent a whole day creating this presentation for our coaching members. Um, and most of the questions were about automation in the chat, right? So he spent a lot of time you know, answering questions about automation. So help the audience understand almost how you've automated and what you're using and maybe some suggestions on what they could do to streamline their business. And I know that's a big open-ended question. Yeah, well, you know, I guess what I would do is I'd pre present the, the listener with this, you know, like learning and figuring out automation is an investment of your time, right? Um, but if you can leverage your time better, like let's say I spend three hours trying to figure out and solve a problem that is regularly recurring in my business. If I sit down and spend three hours trying to solve that problem, that buys me a lifetime of never spending time on that problem again. And that's the power of automation. So if you're a listener out there and you're looking to increase your deal volume, as an example, you can only go so far on your own. You can only go so far with an assistant, right? Um, there's a point where you need to bring automation into your business. So anytime you've got a repeatable task, um, you know, that's where you want to be looking to automate. And anytime you start losing control of your time, um, a really, really good example of that is, you know, like Rich, you, you've taught us for years about uh, when someone wants to book time with you, you know, how's today at three or tomorrow at two, right? Which is brilliant we might not always have the discipline to do that. So there's, uh, and I know this has been talked about many times, but um, there's a program out there. There's many programs, not to name one, but it's like a scheduling program that works within your calendar where you can set rules with that program. And rather than me say, you know, I could meet you maybe on Saturday at 1030 or whatever that is. I just say, here's a link to my calendar. I don't have to tell them all my rules. I don't have to tell them what's, what's happening, you know, when I'm not available, 
but they can just book time with me when I've allowed it to be available. And that's such an empowering thing because I have full control of my time. As an example, you can't get me after six o'clock at night. You can't get me on a Sunday. You know, you can't get me on Saturday morning. I've got some, my son's hockey practice. So that is never now interfering with uh, other things in my life that I want to do. And that's just generally what automation is going to do. So for me, I mean, there's automation you can create with people or there's automation you can create with software. And I mean, just I, a minute. That's, I, I, I just want to go back and hit on something that I think is important. Okay. Here's the value to the client and what you just did. So you say to a client, I'm going to send you a link, right? And you can click on the link and you just go ahead and book an appointment, right? One thing that people love to have is choice. And what you're doing is you're giving them choice. But the cool thing about the choice you're giving them is they're only the choices that you're willing to work. So think about how powerful that is. Because they say that when you're dealing, with, especially with a newer customer, one thing you want to offer them is choice. Because people want choice, right? They don't want to be told, here's the way it is. You know, it's like we've talked about commission. You know, why are you only saying one commission? Why wouldn't you give them the choice? Yeah. Sort of things. People are looking for choice. So anyway, I just wanted to, I wanted to emphasize that for the listeners. And sorry, I really interrupted your no, no, I, I agree with you. Choice choice is important. People will live or live or die over their autonomy. And yeah. if you don't, if you don't offer them that, then uh, you're just going to create friction in the relationship. So, um, but uh, yeah, like you can create, uh, you can create it with software or you can create it through people. So whenever you're going through a transaction, like the best advice for a new listener or a new realtor rather would be to really go through your process and just document everything that you do. And then, you, you know, your, what your real goal is, is how can I eliminate this from my day so I can go generate more business, generate more leads or better service my client, right? So there's, there's just a long list of things you can do. And you can do that with marketing. You can do that with client experience. Um, I'm struggling to think of anything else yeah. that you can do that with outside of real estate, but you know, it can, it can, it can really control your time and, and just make you a hell of a lot more productive, which is what it's all about. If I can spend an extra three hours on the phone each day, servicing clients, returning phone calls to leads, uh, or improving my business in new ways, you know, there's, there's levels to this business. Um, someone starting out is on level one, you know, maybe I'm on level four, someone else is on level six, but there's always another level and you can always get better. And that allows you to level up and now start taking on bigger responsibilities, more responsibilities, and ideally more transactions. Right. Okay. So tell us some of the technologies. I love that analogy, right? If I'm going to spend, you know, time solving a problem, why do I want to solve the problem twice? Why don't I solve it once? And then every time I would have had to solve that problem, I now have that space or do that task. It doesn't have to be a problem or do that task. That was a brilliant analogy. You're a really smart guy. I don't know if you know. <laughs> well, I, uh, I don't very often say something smart for you. So. I don't very often tell you that, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about what are some technologies you're using that you would recommend to realtors? Yeah. So, um, oh geez, I got so many, I mean, chat GPT is the obvious one. Um, you know, I, I, I think what do you it's, use uh, that for, well, I use it a lot more for creativity more than anything. Um, you know, it's, uh, like if you're hosting like a client event as an example, and you want to think of ideas that you could do to, you know, incorporate into that client event or tag along with it. Uh, it's, it's brilliant for that. Um, I use it to do marketing. So as an example, um, you know, Dan, uh, Kennedy, yeah. um, so if, you know, famous copywriter, so I can say, you know, this is what I want to accomplish. I'd like you to write me something that I'm going to pop in the mailboxes around these listings as, you know, copywritten as though you were Dan Kennedy and it'll present me with a beautifully copywritten, uh, you know, mail out that I can send out. That's going to be incredibly effective. Um, I use it to create images. I use it uh, for YouTube. I use it to, um, oh, geez, there's so many things you can use it for. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, with chat GBT, the, the, if you're not using it more, it's because you're limited in your, um, what you know that it can do. Right. So, you know, I could go take a picture of the food in my fridge right now and say, suggest dinner that I can create out of based on what you see out of my fridge. 
most people would never think to do that, but it's because you haven't tried and you haven't thought about it yet. And that's the way, that's the best way to describe chat GPT is it can do a hell of a lot more than what you're probably using it for, right. but you just got to think, uh, you know, bigger and what you can actually ask it to accomplish for you. Cause it's, it's unbelievable what it can do. I, I was doing, um, some, some work for, uh, as a professional witness for real estate, for a law firm. And I had all these documents I had to summer, summarize with, uh, tables and get numbers out of. I just sent them to chat GPT and asked it for some information. It spit it back out and it saved me from reading 20 pages of, uh, you know, a graph with prices and bedrooms and all that sort of stuff. So um, mm. it's amazing what it can do. That, that would be uh, a great one for people to consider. What about, what do you use for a CRM? I use follow up boss, uh, really love follow up boss. It's got the ability to text from it. And a lot of our automations come from follow up boss. So we've built a lot of funnels to generate leads. And so uh, what, what that basically is, is we offer something of value to people, whether it's a PDF, access to video or video series, uh, and there's some other stuff you can do, but they will automatically through, um, uh, through automation, they will automatically go into our CRM. So I, let me give you an example. They, uh, someone comes to one of our open houses, we will use uh, instead of the old clipboard and, you know, hey, will you sign in? We've got a form at the front of the door with a QR code. They will scan the QR code with their phone. They'll input their information. So we're not now worrying about spelling of their name or their phone number, or their email or anything like that. They're filling it in through automation using Zapier as an example. It will now go into our follow-up boss account. Everything is there. And now they will be part of our automation within follow-up boss. So now they will get uh, emails related to the property. They will get, uh, they will go into our open house funnel, which is designed to turn people from just, you know, a visitor into a lead as an example. And then once that funnel ends, they, we will use automation to put them into one of our kind of keep in touch plans, um, you know, eventually to try and turn them into a client where they'll be getting videos through automation. Um, we'll, we'll send them uh, new PDFs or lead generators through that and just trying to get them to pick up the phone and call us. We've got a home buyers course that we've designed. So we're trying to um, promote that to people as well. And that's three hours of you sitting watching me on video. If you sit and watch me on video for three hours, I'm really hoping you think I'm smart. And if you don't, if you don't, then you're probably never going to want to see me again, which is okay too. But, you know, just trying to build that trust and authority with people, but all that's done through automation. So by investing that time up front, I don't have to invest that time now ever again. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, manually sending an email to an open house lead because I know that they're going to be taken care of through the systems that we've created. Now of the systems that you've created, is this something you do yourself or do you use somebody to help you create them? I do it myself. As you said, I'm, I'm pretty techie, um, but there's certainly people out there that can do it for you. You know, like I, I, I bet you most realtors could use a real good tech, tech hygiene check. Right. Uh, meaning, you know, the way that they run their website, the way that they run their emails, um, the way that they even structure maybe their storage with their team it was incredible how, uh, until you really start paying attention to this, uh, like I've even myself, I was incredible about how unhygienic I was in regards to my tech housekeeping. So just even getting a lot of that in order, but I've always found, you know, when I started real estate, Facebook was coming out, right. And I used to train realtors on Facebook, seems like forever ago now, but they all thought I grew up using Facebook, which wasn't the case. I find so many realtors are so scared to click on something and, and they think it's going to shut down their whole computer and melt it and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, there's the most beautiful thing on your web browser called the back button. Mm -hmm. If it takes you to a spot that you don't like, try that back button and see what happens. It'll take you right back and try again. Right. Um, you can pay to have some people do this for you. There's definitely companies out there that'll do it, but uh, I like to be in it because I, I have better control over the, uh, the platform and better control over the end experience for the client that way. So I like doing it myself. Excellent. Okay. So here's what we're going to do, Darren. We're going to change it up a little bit. Um, actually, just before I do, I want to go to the lightning round. Is there any thoughts you have on scheduling for everybody? Because you, you, you operate a pretty disciplined schedule, right? And you say, I don't work past six o'clock. So let's say somebody struggles, you know, they you know, they're taking appointments whenever somebody wants to see them, that sort of thing. What suggestions would you give those realtors and how to get more control of their time? Well, there's, 
there's nothing there's no problem in this world that another listing probably won't solve um you know and if if you're really so concerned i mean it, it, don't get me wrong like there's times where i have to bend to my schedule i think everybody does that and i, I assume most people would know that but 99 percent of the time i'm in full control and I'm not worried about the outcome. Um, I want it to happen, of course, but I'm more concerned about the experience for the client. But just because they say they want to meet at seven o'clock, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the best experience for them too. They just got home from work. They haven't had dinner yet. The kids are screaming. They need to be put to bed. Is that the most productive time to be talking to them about making such a major decision and a pricing decision and going through paperwork with size 10 font? It's not right. So, you know, let's, let's, let's book it at a time that's more convenient forever and, or for everyone rather. And I've got a pretty good idea when that is, you know, that's maybe Saturday morning at 10 AM or, you know, Hey, I can jump off work early at three o'clock to come meet you at four. Like that's a way better experience for them as well. So they will help you control your schedule. And I, I actually believe it, it helps them as well. So don't be afraid to put that out to the world and try and get them to help you live the life you want, but also help them, you know, make better decisions and be better prepared for the experience with you. Yeah, you just have to have standards. You need personal standards, right? You do. And if you let other people control your standards, then you don't have any. I agree. I yeah. agree. And I, I understand that you got to break it once in a while. We all do, right? You got to do what you got to do once in a while. Um, but the thing is, I like what you said there is that you want to create the best experience for them. And the best experience, you know, isn't seeing you at 730 at night when the kids are cranky, everybody's tired, including you, right? You know, you want to be a great experience. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, lightning round. These are a bunch of stupid questions that have no meaning. And, uh, no matter what you say, you can't win this game. Favorite food, <laughs> favorite food. This is the weirdest one you probably ever had, but sandwiches. Never heard that one before. I right. will cross a busy freeway with a blindfold on for a good sandwich. I, um, um, that's amazing. Favorite movie. Uh, dumb and dumber. I'm a dumber. What book should everyone read? Oh, uh, how to win friends and influence people's probably been said a million times, but that would always be my number one. I would say anything by Benjamin Hardy. Um, he's yeah. released so many good books. Him and Dan Sullivan have released so many good books. Gap in the Gain, yeah. uh, 10X to do than 2X, uh, Who Not How is a great one. There's so many. Yeah. Favorite app? Oh, goodness. Uh, photos. Um, I do a lot of traveling. So I spend a lot of time looking at photos of my family and my kids uh, when I'm traveling. And I uh, it makes me smile when I'm on an airplane. Wonder if they spend a lot of time looking at photos of you. I doubt it. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> favorite, favorite, favorite hobby. Love to cook. Oh, do you? I didn't know I that. I love it. It's, uh, you know, we use our brains all day and not that you're not thinking when you're cooking, but you know, you're kind of more so using your hands and whatnot. And it's kind of like art in a way, if you think about it, right. Mm -hmm. You're, uh, you're trying to get to an end result where you're really impressing people and, and yourself and, um, and you can make or break it quite easily. So I love, uh, I love cooking and experimenting and trying new things. Cool. Favorite musician or music. Oh, I'd say Kenny Chesney. Okay. Country boy. Yeah. Uh, Favorite day of the week? Sunday. Why? Sundays are quiet. That's one of my, uh, one of my days. I, I run hard when I'm, when I'm working. And um, so I expect to, uh, well, I was going to say play hard. I don't play hard. I relax hard. So Sunday mm -hmm. is a great day where it's 100% about the family. It's 100% about uh, recharging and getting ready for the week. And, uh, and just remembering that there's more to life than just selling homes. So that's, uh, that's my time. And, uh, I don't break that for, for anything or anybody. Very good. Dream holiday. We'd like to go to Machu Picchu in Peru. I had to Google, I, I knew you were going to ask that question. So I had to Google where Machu Picchu was. Cause I just keep saying Machu Picchu and I know what it yeah. looks like, but I know it's in Peru apparently. Very cool. That'd be a great holiday. Okay. So big three questions. We're going to finish with these. So the first is the small giant. So as you know, a small giant, you know, in terms of our company is, it's an actionable idea that's relatively easy to execute that if done with consistency would produce an extraordinary result in somebody's personal and or professional life. What would your answer be? Get up early. Yeah. What time do you get up? I'm up at 5 a.m. every day. I will read for an hour. I use my books as study guides now. I'm not about uh, uh, volume of books. I'm about getting what I need from the book. 
Uh, and then I will exercise for about an hour and a half. I'll have breakfast with my family, get my kids ready for school. And um, sometimes I'll throw in some meditation in there if I can. But uh, I know I've won the day when I've been able to do that because I've controlled my morning and I've got it off to the right start. So everybody heard that. There's a great morning right there. Get up, read for an hour. Is anybody else up when you get up at that time? The, my, my daughter or my son will, my kids get up early, I guess, cause we get up early, but they will stumble downstairs. And there's a little piece of me that, uh, that says, I'm not quite ready to, to say good morning. Yet. <laughs> you know, it's a good chapter. I want to finish this or whatever. Right. But, uh, it's all good. Yeah. Excellent. Read for an hour, exercise, and then start your day. Uh, second question, deliver the unexpected. Delivering the unexpected from a marketing standpoint, you know, I think could be one of your greatest lead generating sources in the world. So has there any been a time when you have delivered the unexpected or you regularly do for other people, or is there an experience you've had where somebody delivered the unexpected to you and you became an instant advocate? Yeah, there was an instance. Uh, actually, I got a, a neat story for you too, but there was an, there was an instance um, where I bought my wife a pair of Hunter boots. You know what Hunter boots are? I do not. They're just imagine silly rubber boots that are way too expensive. That's a great way. Okay. Speak. Okay. I can't imagine they do anything else other than keep your feet dry in a puddle. But um, anyways, it, you know, they're nice boots or whatever. My, my wife really wanted a pair for Christmas. So couldn't find the size anywhere. She told me what size she wanted and you've heard of the company Zappos. Yeah. So uh, Zappos had them. So I ordered them. We live close to the border so I could run down to the U S and grab them and bring them back. That sort of thing. So she opens them on Christmas day and they don't fit. And I'm sitting there thinking, my gosh, you told me the size. This has got nothing to do with me. This is your fault. And uh, anyway, so <laughs> as, as uh, if you know, my wife this is exactly what she did is she jumps on the phone on, uh, on Christmas day to call Zappos and try and exchange them. And uh, so something wasn't working through the website or whatever. So she jumps on uh, a call with this lady and I don't recall her name, but what was amazing about this was they're a, they're open on Christmas day, which is unbelievable. Um, B, this lady was so personable and so lovely, you know, asking about what the weather was like up in Vancouver and um, just really, you know, into my wife's story and that sort of thing. Not only, uh, so they, they, they couldn't replace the boots in her size. They didn't have them, but they were just red rubber boots. There was another different kind of red rubber boot that was acceptable, I guess, to my wife. So um, they were, they were available and the lady was very happy to send them out. It's all free shipping. Um, but not only that, they were more expensive. And so the lady said, you know what, and I know it's Christmas and I want you to really, you know, have a lovely Christmas and whatnot. So don't worry about pulling out the credit card. It's on us. We're going to actually take care of the difference in cost. And, uh, you know, you'll have them express shipping, you know, probably not on Boxing Day because of the day it was, but in a day or two. So she tells me this story and I am just jaw on the floor. Like you want to talk about customer service and really leaving people with an impression, right? And what did that cost them versus how many people I've told that story to, right? Yeah. And now even, you know, the opportunity to talk on your podcast about it, right? So, I mean, they, they are into customer for life. And what I, what I wanted to share with you too, is we, we actually did a really fun thing as our team yesterday. We, um, we said, you know, what do we do for our clients to really go versus what they expect versus what they get? So, you know, you did a really good job hitting all the notes on that contract and it's the best contract ever written in real estate history. Well, that's what they expect. They don't, they don't know that they just expect that. Right. Um, but we went through this exercise where we said, if we want to earn advocates with every single client, what, what are we really doing to show them that we care? And if we're going to show them where we're, we care, we're going to do that with time. And if we're going to do that with time, here's the one rule to this game is we cannot buy their love. We have to earn it. And we, we actually walked through a, a trail in a forest together to try and open our minds a little bit. We came up with this huge list of stuff about simple things, you know, uh, whatever on moving day, you know, it's stressful day showing up for an hour in jeans and not to say that we're going to do it necessarily, but show up for an hour in jeans and say, guys, busy day. I'm here to help. You know, like, what does that say to them and how does it make them feel? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to buy their love. We're just, we're just trying to let them know that we care about them and we want to make sure their experience is amazing. So it was a fun game. And I, I, uh, I implore anybody listening to, to give it a try. I think that's brilliant. I think that's brilliant. You know, if you think about life, I was like, I was listening to a podcast this morning and 
there was talking about the most important thing in the world is the relationships that you have. And what we should be doing every day is trying to deepen those relationships, right? Where, you know, you have a deep connection with your husband, your wife, your kids, your parents, you know, your friend, your best friends, all that sort of thing. Um, and he talked a lot about it's, it's a very difficult thing to do today because everybody's got their face, you know, looking at a phone, right? Nobody's just sitting talking anymore. And when he said that, I thought to myself, I said, he's, I think he's 100% right. I think that's very, very important, right? Um, because you think at the end of the day, when, when you're passing away, who do you want to be surrounded with? All these people, these, you know, these are the people you care about the most and they care about you. So why wouldn't we want to deepen those relationships, make time for those relationships? But then I got thinking even further out than that. I said, but you want to know something that's important with all the relationships. That's important with the guy that you meet at a store, right? You don't have to, because you're going in the store as a customer and he's, you know, the customer service or salesperson, you can take the initiative to get to know that person. How you doing? You know, good to see you, busy today. You know, like, like every single person you meet is a relationship that you can create, that you can connect with. And to me, if, if you make an effort, which by the way, I'm not good at this when I don't know the people, but I want to get better at it, that I literally want to make a connection with everybody I meet. It might be just a connection for five seconds, but I want to look at them in the eye. You know what I mean? How you doing? Really great to meet you. That sort of thing. Because what you're doing is the same thing with your customers. And if you think about extraordinary customer service is generally based on relationships. Now, you might not be there to do it, but they know you did it. You know, like sending with somebody something as an example. I know you're buying it then, but but it's it's people to people all the time. And we get so caught up sometimes with technology, we forget that the greatest relationships are created when to a large degree it's people to people, or one person is thinking about another person and they do something for the other person because they're thinking about them, right? It's all it's all about how you leave people and how they feel about you. Um, right. You know, they're, they're not, it's that famous quote. I think it's Maya Angelou, but I don't remember, but um, you know, it's not about what you did and people won't remember what you did. They'll remember how you made them feel. Right. And You know, we're in a business where we, we expect a lot of trust from people and, and oftentimes they have to give it to us, but they don't, we don't always earn it. We don't always get it. So we need to put ourselves in those situations where we do earn it. And we, they, they know that, without a doubt, there is nobody else on this planet that they would ever call to trust with the transaction, their most valuable asset. It's got to be you. It's got to be you. It's got to be you. When you can leave someone in that space, that is free marketing. Drop the bus benches, drop the online ads, forget all that stuff. Your phone will be so busy ringing off the hook, you won't even know what to do. And then you'll have to roll out this business model we've been talking about today. Yeah. You know, we had uh, yesterday on the uh you know, the, the large group Mac call, we had Juliet right on. And she said something yesterday that, you know, really resonated. And she goes that every single person has a brand. And your brand is what people say about you when you're not there. And I thought, pretty good point, right? Like, you know, what do people say about you when you're not around? Oh, he's never on time. Every time you know, he's been late, you know, or, you know, every time he says he's going to do something, you know, it's always you know, two days late or whatever the case is, what those people are saying about you is your brand, right? You know, are they saying, oh, geez, that's one of the nicest people I've ever met, you know, like whatever it is. But she said, if you really think about it, we have all these habits, the way we operate in business and in life, and that creates our brand. So what are people saying about you when you're not there? Now we're guessing at what they're saying, but I think we'd all have a pretty good idea what they're saying, right? We yeah. can probably figure that out. So, okay, last question. Based on what you know now, what advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? Ooh, um, enjoy the ride. Uh, you know, and what I, actually, you did a podcast with uh, Bill Parnaby, the great Bill Parnaby on this. And um, it was about enjoying the trip to the destination more so than the, the destination itself. And especially when I was younger, um, it was so much about work and, and building. And I, you know, I'm happy for where I am today, but I probably sacrificed a, a lot of living and a lot of maybe even friendships, uh, along the way. 
And if I could go back in time, um, you know, you learn to work smarter, obviously, but uh, don't forget, don't forget about living your life in between, right? Um, there's, uh, there's lots to live out there. As far as I know, we only get one shot to do this. So let's have fun while we're here. And, um, you know, we can build a great business and still have an incredible life at the same time. Yeah, I agree. So my tagline, it's a beautiful life, make it count. What's a beautiful life to you? Live the life that you want to live every day and uh, be good to the people around you and life will pay you back in, in spades. Love it. Listen, dear, my friend, I want to thank you. You've been a, you know, I didn't even mention on the podcast, but you've been a client for a long, long time. And we appreciate you so much because not only are you doing this podcast, but you're always teaching and doing presentations for our coaching members and on our stages and all of that. And you have never, ever disappointed. You always put a lot of work into it and do a great job. So what I know about you is you do have this true desire to, you know, to serve other people. And that's what's really cool, especially with all the work you do with the, uh, you know, the real estate board. So, so thank you for, you know, our friendship. Thank you for being a great client. And thank you for all uh, the work that you do for all of us. Hey, my, my pleasure. You know, Rich, I've learned so much from you. I, uh, I, I, I'm convinced I would not be where I am today. And one, you know, one of the best things I got to say that you've ever taught me is perspective. And, um, I have a perspective on life that I just absolutely love. And I, uh, I hope that uh, everybody else gets to experience it at some point in their lives as well. So thank you. Cool stuff, buddy. Thank you for being here, my friend. Thank you as well.